guys, we are back from our break. And now we'll be going through a draft of the current top ranked player, which is Richwen. And we'll comment it on it and, and see mm -hmm. how does he pick differently from our own opinion. So let's go. The first pick here. So what would you pick, Tico? Um, for me, I would definitely pick Sola. Um, Sola is a very good hero that gives you a lot of damage against towers. And um, the second card I would actually pick is the either the Heat Fire, which gives you initiative after using it, or Arm the Rebellion. But in Richard's case, he picked Thunderhide Alpha and Arm the Rebellion. So, what what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I think uh, maybe he doesn't like Solar Khan, but Solar Khan for me is an auto pick in draft because uh, he deals 12 damage to tower and 3 rounds of his hit is 36 damage. So it's mm -hmm. she, Solar Khan can almost take down a tower by, by herself. So, and is the next one, it's probably just like you say, either hit fire or arm the rebellion. I'll probably take the arm the rebellion over hit fire here uh, because I like to pick. Uh, more colors in the first few packs just mm -hmm. to keep the option open for the yeah, colors. That's, that's a valid point as well. Yeah, the other choices are they're not that good. Yeah, the, the, exactly. items, so... the items are fine, but I think it's always uh, good to not pick item too early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's see what Retrain picked. So Retrain has picked, yeah, he, did, he didn't pick the Solar Khan, which is a little bit weird. Yeah, but I think maybe he doesn't like Solar. Hey, mm -hmm. okay, let's look at his second pack. So in his second pack, he what? he picked what I would have picked, the Ogre Conscript and the Thunderstorm, which I feel is the most worth out of all these cards over here. Yeah. I think the, in this, th this pack, there's three cards that, that is uh, all very good. One is an Ogre Conscript, one is a Thunderstorm, and one is the home field advantage. Mm -hmm. In my case, I will probably take home field and ogre because I, from, from my own draft experience, I will always try to stay away from blue. Yeah, from blue, <laughs> yeah. So blue. Because Unless, of course, you see an annihilation and then yeah. you you and splash blue. Yeah. And... I mean, Thunderstorm is a good card, uh, but I think home field advantage is very, very strong. <laughs> so. When there's an equal power level card that is blue and some other color, I usually pick mm -hmm. the other color. If there's, if this is a uh, something like a Salamine's favor, I'll pick the thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So Richard has picked the ogre and thunderstorm. So the third pack, I'll pick I'll the standard bearer and the keen book turret. What what would yeah, you? Yeah, same. So, so yeah. I would also pick the standard. Uh, Bearer and the Kingfolk Turret. But um, I might consider getting the Obliterating Orb just in case. So I have an item that helps me deal against annoying improvements in the game. Yeah. I personally don't really like Obliterating Orb. I think it's too expensive. Yeah, it's 10. It's 10. Um, 10, 10, 10 gold for one. 10 gold for one. Yeah, I'll look but... for items like the Demagicking Mall. For improvement mm -hmm. answer instead. Yeah, that's that's one way to look at it. But um, usually, if something presents itself that allows you to get rid of improvements, it's you must have at least one item or spell that allows you to do that. Yeah, that's if true. not, uh, there's a lot of improvements in the game that can break the shit out of you. Yeah, yeah. Up yep. up is a consideration, but I think uh, the standard barrier and the kinfo is. A little bit, a a tier or two more better than the orb, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next one. Yep, next so one. The next one. So this for this um, I would definitely go for the iron for gold mine. So this is a very good card that gets that gives you gold on the first turn if you start drawing it. And you can actually use three gold to buy even the very basic traveler's cloak, which yes. gives you four health at yes. the start of the game. 
So this is quite a good um, card to get. And? And the second card I will get is the Soul, Soul of Spring. So uh, if you're playing a green green deck, uh, Soul of Spring is actually very good because of the four regen and it really helps you sustain a lot of creeps in the lane later yeah. on. I think Iron Fork Gold Mine is, is too good. It's a card that worth like at least three gold and the long the, the earlier that is played it will it will it will worth more gold. So the can be like fifteen gold if you if you survive for like that six six turns. And Soul of Spring is very good by itself. The reason that Soul of Spring is good because uh it counts by itself, right? So the moment you play the card, you immediately gain twelve health. It's yeah, exactly. So it's give it's a given card that gives you a four regen just like that. Yep. So it's kind of a another consideration is the sig sig signet ring, which is okay. But I think the gold mine and soul of string is just too strong. Yeah. So but so usually in draft you won't draft. Like you mentioned earlier, you you wouldn't want to look at items on the first pack. Yeah. Yeah, so items will usually... You will usually look at items around the third or the fourth pack. That gives you more um, insights on what kind of deck you want to play. Yep. And especially when you have uh, so much better cards in the, mm -hmm. in, in, in the same pack, you, you won't take items. So unfortunately, mm, exactly. uh, Richard but did not in take... This case, um, you mine. are at, yeah. He did not pick the gold mine, so that's a really very sad um, opportunity that he made that he gave up. Yeah. And in the next pick, he actually picked um, Duke and Diabolic Diabolic uh, Revelation, which I feel that he should have went for the Red Mist more instead. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, this I think it's a Red Mist more items and... that. Is a very that is very good against um towers and heroes that, and if your heroes are blocked, you can at least do five damage in. So this is something you would want to get in your deck. Yeah. So red means small, and one of the cards, the, all the cards, the other three cards are frozen, not playable. Yeah, but I if you want, I would probably just take Duke. At, yeah. At, at Duke most. is <laughs> like slightly better. Yeah. And look at this. He has a Necroforce that popped up after he gave up the uh, Iron Fog Gold Mine. So that is something that um, it is really wasted because he, if he had the Iron Fog Gold Mine, he could have <laughs> used it with the Necroforce. Yeah. He can always use the before Black Hero, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the game is starting. Yeah, so. Uh, um, it's I, starting I, I, in three minutes, actually. <laughs> are they starting now? Because like everyone has registered their deck, so let 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 see what the mod. Alright, let's continue on the draft. Maybe, mm -hmm. we we we'll get the notification when 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 they start. Yeah, we yeah, that's right. Uh, so now we are on the second pack. Yeah. So over here, um, there are a lot of good cards. Um, personally, I would take the first item, which is the Blink Dagger. Definitely, Blink Dagger is a very good item to have in your deck. For seven go, you can actually redeploy your heroes to any other lane. And the second card I would take um, would either be the Untested Grant or the Tyler Estate Sensor. Yeah, I think three. There's three main con, main picks here. So it's a Tyler Acid Sensor, Conscript, and the Dagger. Yeah. So I think it's a preference. I think Tyler Acid Sensor is a must pick. Yep. Conscript is because you have a, one already. So if I you are, wouldn't go for second one actually. Yeah. You go for second one if you are running like uh, more than one rich hero. If you have one rich hero, I think one Conscript is enough. Yeah, so my style, I might probably, I'll probably take the and uh sensor and the pink dagger. So. Okay. Um, so they have decided to start the game. So 
do you want to continue looking at the dress or we can actually just go on to yeah. round four let's hop into the game all right so who shall we watch now okay your, your turn to choose hmm. let's watch Humi's game <laughs> Humi? yeah Humi. <laughs> okay so Humi is actually one of the mods in the Ironwood branch and he's one he is my mentor actually he taught me how to play artifact and i heard that his current deck is quite funny to watch so let's see okay i can't find his game oh his game is down there he's, he's right at the bottom <laughs> <laughs> so, okay so he has <laughs> one for me <laughs> so i guess you can copy the <laughs> golden ticket no you can't copy the golden ticket if the golden ticket rolls high you can copy it mm -hmm. so that the joke the choker j stack is playing blue black and he is yep. playing blue splashing blue black splashing red yeah, so Humi is going for a lot of um creeps them creeps, creeps <laughs> to damage, yeah. Which can be actually taken out by Tower Barrage. He the Choker has actually three Tower Barrage in his deck. Yeah, three Tower Barrage. Uh... And nothing else that can help him kill off. So based on deck, I think uh Humi's deck is probably slightly favorite. Here mm -hmm. because uh the choker runs cards like Oglothy Catapult, Buying Time, Collateral Damage, Tyler and Fate. Right. Self two self sabotage. Uh one fog of war. Those are filler cards, I think. Which has very low impact. Yeah, so now we shall wait and see what Hume does this turn. So heal me. There's nothing you can do to draw. draw. Mm -hmm. Andre doesn't do anything. So would you play the self sabotage uh this turn? Oh, he does. I mean, so enrich just play and at any cost <laughs> has already been marked. Yeah, you, you just play it right. Yeah. So Hume has one consideration here is to play the pick off on the last lane or which he does. Yep, he does and he gets lane advantage for the third lane. Yes. So if Where he if... can throw Venom or no. put the Dimension Portal but I would personally put so Venom. And right here, you see Hume Killing that um, Necrophos actually gives him back all his HP. Yep, for oh, that 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 split sticker for you. Uh, I yes. will actually play the dimensional portal because I think Soul Venom is mm -hmm. better played in a uh, more busy lane. Because no, I I will use it on a more empty lane. So when creep spawns. If dies. they spawn in front of the two creeps, it just dies. Okay. Yeah, so... But in this case, you look at it, there's two creeps spawning here, so... Maybe one of them might immediately die. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So that's something that you can look forward to in the game. Yep. You can look for the, 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 the wards direction. So heal me again. I I guess you just you dimensional portal here, right? Yep. So you look at it, uh the creeps blocking the the wards will immediately die in lane three. Yeah. And but the the reason I think dimensional portal just now it's slightly better. That that's my uh point of view is 
What? At any, at any cost? Okay, I guess that kills everything. And your two heroes survives. And the, the reason is uh, Dimension Portal uh, push, pushes more damage uh, immediately. In lane 1, would you have also used the Battlefield Control? Oh, it doesn't draw a card, so that... Yeah. Would you would you relentless pursue your one of your black heroes link tree instead? Uh, not really. I, I usually use relentless pursuit if I can set up an upkeep kill, or I just want to move the hero. So I think the the black heroes here are pushing damage, which is which is fine. Choo choo, the hero dies. Yep. So look at the creep. The creep ju instantly just died. So Choker J has nothing to play. He can play a Tower Barrage. Clear Use the creep. Four damage to one creep. But it's not gonna kill any of them. And then now Humi can play the Dimension Portal, which sets up another six six damage to the tower. Yep, so he clears a creep and Humi replaces the creep with his own creep. Yeah. So the thing is, right now you see the Skyraf. <laughs> oh, he uses Battlefield Control to kill the Skyraf. I guess you can. That's fast. I guess you can let he... him leave Skyraf to to survive. And Would next... you? Because next turn. Okay, so if he survives this turn. Yeah, the ward is, is going to come HP, in the front. Will kill him. The ward is going to come in front of Skyraf, right? Yeah, so... and if there's no creep spawn, it's the a... Skyraf will instantly die. Yeah. Okay, there is one creep spawn, so let's see how this plays out. And it's still a... Uh, it's two coin flips, right? So... Mm -hmm. It's one coin flip, uh, depending if the... If the if the, the creeps goes in front of... Uh, yeah, the, the ward yeah, goes, goes... Go in front of Skyraf. Yeah. And the second coin flip is if the Venom ward shoots the Skyraf. Yeah. And it does! So... so Skyraf is dead. Upkeep kill on the Skyra. So here, I will just cloak one of them and TP the other one out. Lock in time. Uh, I will actually play lock in time at the last lane because uh that way you 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 lock more cards. Uh, you lock more cards for next turn and you prevent. The odds of locking an it, item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you usually don't want to lock items, you want to lock spells. Yeah, so, that's true. So as you said, uh, he will TP one, one, one of them out. Then in this turn, um, if I want to save uh, one of the heroes, I will just relentless pursue it to another lane. I think for me, uh, I'll just take the trade. Because if if his hero is not dying and my my hero is dying, then I'll I'll, I'll be fine. I'll I'll I'll, I'll relentless pursuit. Else I will take the trade. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you can one for, for and one for me for a cloak. But probably not worth it. You save it for a more expensive item. Now, Jumoi is probably going middle. Yeah. So, right lane is done. And left lane, there's a lot of creeps. And putting Jumoi in the first lane uh, will be an overcommitment uh, over commitment of heroes. So, yeah. Putting it middle is a wise choice. So the choker just choose to spread his blue hero first and second lane, which I think is correct. Because you can't really play for the last lane. And first lane, the Mystic Flare is going to clear the board, which is super powerful. 
Okay, so now you mistake player, right? Would he... Yeah, oh. you. So he, assuming you, what what do you do? Do you silence the the Zeus? I think this I think is a misplay from the chokers. Mystic Flare just clears the board. Yeah, now you don't clear the board. <laughs> yeah, so he silences. And then he can't get the queue in on the Zeus, sadly. So that's something that's quite sad. But what I would do is I would just put a Stonehall Club cloak on the Bloodseeker. And okay. then give let him all the HP. Let him grow. <laughs> yeah, so now what I would do is put the Stonehall cloak. Yep. So Ooh, he got fight. us. <laughs> yep, so once Bloodseeker kills the creep, he will get uh, an additional 2 damage and he will heal it back to 12 HP. Yeah, you Stonehall Pike, you probably save it for, for the Venom on the last lane so that it mm -hmm. gets the. Little so over here, what I will do first is I will use Jomoy's skill yeah, you draw. to draw one card. And you hope there's nothing that you can do. What would you hope to get from Jomoy's card? Yeah, Ogre Conscript is oh, fine. Ogre Conscript is fine. Yeah, that's that's really fine. You hope it's one of his lit, lit cards, actually. Yeah, you will hope to draw the dimensional portal, portal probably, because you want to play this 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 wrong. Hmm. So now his Jomo is gonna die in the next turn. I actually think yeah. Sadly. I actually think Hilmi is not in a good position at the moment. Because of the hard stopper, Jomo will imme immediately die. Yeah. And first lane, he is not clearing a creep as well. Yeah, so what's gonna happen here? So he's putting his Necrophos back in lane 1. And it seems that um, the Choker knows that his Jomon is gonna die, so he's just gonna put in He's over committing into lane 2 at the moment. But yeah, which I don't it, agree. Yeah, it's making the. So with Jamoin dying, uh, it's almost. And the crit dying, it's almost. The tower is almost. Yeah, so almost... Parallax, Parallax and Necrophos would have been enough. And what I would do is I would just put. Um, Skyrock, first lane, right? Yeah, Skyrock is first lane. But the problem is, would you want to um, Thunder. Uh, Thunder God's Graph here. Thunder God's actually do, does nothing. It doesn't kill. It doesn't kill anyone except for Jamoy, which would already die. So it's actually yeah. quite kind of pointless. So what can you do? You can play like. You can play Murder Plot on Bounty Hunter and push for damage. Fog of War. <laughs> okay, I I guess that works. <laughs> and he managed to disarm three of his. I really in your mystery. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I guess that works. I have never actually played that card before. <laughs> yeah, so for the choker, what I'll do, I'll murder plot to push for 15 damage, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Murder plot. Bounty and push for 15. Yep, that's what I would do. But who will you take out? Oh wait, never mind. You you will usually take out the one with the Heartstopper aura. Uh, but you, he doesn't. I'll, 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 I'll hit the tower. You, you can only uh, either hit the creep true. or the tower. Alright, so if he has 15 damage, it would have been lethal the other turn. Yep, the next turn it will be. So both, both would the tower you, will be very low. Would you want to Mystic Flare the two creeps here? Oh no, my he murder plot for the tower, so that's fine. Yeah, I guess that's fair. You can you can save Mystic Flare for the first lane. Mm -hmm. Not looking good for Helmy. 
He has Ursa coming down, so which means he can play Ogre Conscript. On yeah, I can block. But the unlucky thing is that the two crit spawns are on lane one. What? Well, what? one is because of, one is because of the barracks. Yeah, one is because of the barracks. That's an annoying part of Prolex. If you let Prolex mm -hmm. does his things, it's it's really hard for for you to control it. So hip fire. So he has has to block. Yeah, so you just what I would put is You block the bounty, right? You have to block yeah, the bounty. Yeah, block the bounty. So the question is is there any way for Choker J to push for damage? To push for lethal? Two collateral um, he damage. Can, he can if he mystic flash the Oh yeah, he can mystic flash the the Ogre conscript. Yeah, and that will be lethal. And he doesn't, he <laughs> decides to Mystic Flare. Okay. That's a misplay, that's a rather big misplay actually. Yeah, you miss Lethal, you kill, <laughs> you kill a hero but you miss Lethal. Yeah, I mean, you, he's gonna bring down a, a new hero next turn and then you, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, you always go for a Lethal, right? Mm-hmm. I doubt uh, it will matter anyway because the tower is at 4 health. And next turn yes. it's probably going to get eaten by the creeps. Mm -hmm. That's true. And not to mention, uh, Bounty Hunter, uh, the Choker J has 2 collateral damage in his hand. Alright, that's 13 damage. This, this, this is what happens when you don't calculate your <laughs> your odds. <laughs> yeah. You could have yeah. won, but you decided that you want to try something funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, now uh, Bloodseeker uh, dies. Doesn't die? Yeah, dies. Yeah. Okay, the question is, is there a way for Hyobi to survive this? Let's look at his stats. Hey, GG. He just gives up. <clears throat> the yep, the moderator from the Iron Root branch has fallen. <laughs> that was well, a he, he put up a rather good fight, actually. So let's hop into Chingapino and Candlelight game. So Kenlek has a draw ranger. Was he the one that has a draw ranger last turn? Last phase? Or is it Retrain? It was Retrain, right? Yeah, Retrain had a draw ranger. Oof, the Echo Slam. That was a really, really painful thing to watch. Okay, so I guess that's GG. And like. game over. <laughs> now he can block. There's nothing he can do. Oh, he can block with a uh, relentless zombie. Yeah, the zombie. Oh. Or so, not. I think blocking... Yeah, he can block with a zombie. That, that's all he can block. You have to block... Uh, you don't block Lycan. Blocking Lycan is not enough. Right? That's enough. Yeah, oh, that's I did enough. not realize has, that he has two steel reinforcements. Yeah, so that's one of. That is not just he just he just killed himself. Yeah, he just killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> what? He just killed himself. Play. Oh my goodness, he could have survived for one turn, but then he decided to throw that. Yeah, he could have survived for one turn, yeah. but uh, it feels like it, it's not going to matter because he's not winning. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, two leads. So let's hop into. So from our mods, apparently that uh, we have two forced draw because there's a bug. That yeah, happened. there's a bug where if you DC while you are loading, it will immediately end in a draw. draw. Yep. 
Right, so there was one one player who asked me not to watch his game. Which, which player? And his name is Hian Shin. Hian Shin. <laughs> okay, okay. So we shall just watch his game because he asked us not to. <laughs> uh, is there a reason that he asked us not to watch his game? No, I don't know. He, he just asked us not to watch his game, but I okay. don't care. Okay, let, let's hop into this His game. game is interesting. You look at Koya. Koya has a incarnation of Salamene out on the field already. Okay, uh, just got into his game. Also, he actually... I saw some a card. Kinfolk Golem. <laughs> yeah, and... He can he can look at look at the amount of Cut. call the reserves he can spam. He can actually just summon all the call the reserves on lane one and block out the damage. Because of the incarnation, <laughs> he can actually summon another. <laughs> look at what he's doing. He just putting out cards. Instead of winning play, that's not right, because this is that's not definitely an, not a winning play. This is not an ancient. Is it an ancient for him? Ancient no. middle lane? That's not right. No, but the first lane is an ancient. Ancient. So exposed for Korea. What? So what I would have done is actually, before you arm the rebellion, you should have put the rose leaf rejuvenator down first. And uh, I would have thrown the, uh, call the I would have thrown the, call the reserves. Was it call the reserves? Yeah. Yeah. So I would have put call the reserves in, um, for. for the just lane? to see about just on the left lane, just to see if the multi cast. Oh yeah. Uh yeah. So on the first lane, sniper is dying, by the ignite. The Ogloody render is also dying. And I uh, saving rose leaf I think is fine because uh you you save it to you wanna save it to heal your first tower. Correct. Yeah, so that's that's fine as well. So two But why would you put Joboy in lane three instead? I think because you put lane one. Why why would why would you go and battle a lane with a Bristle back? Yeah. I guess he's, Is there someone with a is there someone in Siege? He has to win two. Oh, so lane, the, right? Okay, so a sniper dies. Oh my goodness, that's one. Wow. He yeah, survived that one damage. <laughs> uh, I, I... Why, why would you do that? Then the rose leaf will come down. Yeah, he, he doesn't know because doing that play, I uh, will 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 make your bristle back hits straight. Mm -hmm. The Ursa, but but then the Ursa will still die. So it's just something that. You are just killing off your Ursa for something that's not really worth. But 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 as Hainshan, you don't know that uh, mm. Koya has a creep coming, right? Yeah, that's true. So you, uh, I think you TP out your. Nah, it, it's hard. You might want. Might you probably will TP out one of your hero. Yep, so he does. Uh he TPs out the Ursa. I might I might TP out Zeus actually. Because So that Yeah you, you need a blue hero. Blue hero or Thunder God's Wrath. Or whatever. So both of them has bought of demo curls. Yeah, yeah, so that's something very interesting. Because so... if he draws both of demo curls. Oh, oh. alright. We totally oh, missed that. I guess. That's GG. I guess that's GG. So that's the reason he played the uh, Jomori last uh, game. So wow, that that was a very interesting way to win. <laughs> so calculated by Koya. Yeah. yeah. To play two call on the reserve to the left, one to the middle. Because he knows that two creeps is gonna die to ignite. Mm -hmm. and, and he can drop one. Drop the Dark Seer and play the Rose Leaf. And that will block the Ursa. Yeah. Okay, let's look, hop into Vices and Deja Wu's game. All right. Yeah, Kain Shen, uh, leaving the tower at one health was actually game losing. Could... Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we 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 didn't did not did not uh, enter the game since the beginning, so it's hard to pinpoint which play that might have changed the game. <laughs> oh, there goes the derby. So, what's weird about this lane is that you have so many improvements, but you got no <laughs> heroes in it. Yeah, no heroes. <clears throat> because all your heroes are in the other two lanes trying to um, defend and balance out. And look, there's another Bristleback, and he's against a Viper. It would be a very sad Bristleback. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so based on the bo current boss state, I guess... Visor is leading, because he has taken down the first lane. Yep. And all of his tower is... Still very Still healthy. Still 33, yeah. So... What I would try to do now is probably... Okay, I can go the... I can definitely go the Ducks here to kill him. And I would also probably try to shoot... Shoot the Ducks here uh, now? Ducks here, yeah, shoot the Ducks here. Takes 4 damage. So, our deck for Weiser, he has... Emissary, Thunder Height, Rose Leaf, Spring the Trap. I feel this is a very familiar deck. So he shoots Jmoy. When if he shot Darkseer, Darkseer would have taken 4 damage and it would have been lethal. Yeah. Now he can just search the Jmoy, right? So, yeah, so now he can search the Jmoy. Which he does. And <laughs> actually, yeah, so he should have killed. The ducks here first, Not and then you can put the, you can put the ogre conscript in front of the Favan. Or yeah, you can actually put the creep which blocks it as well. Kitiko, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look at Vice's deck, you look at his card. I feel like mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen this deck last phase. Thunder Hide emissary, rose leaf, spring the trap, conscript. Yeah, but him. it's not. It's, it's not, not him though, it's another it's oh, another guy. <laughs> Yeah, it's another guy. We we did not watch Vice's game last last phase. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think I think we trend had this deck. Similar cards, right? No, or something like this. Yeah, there was someone with I with Red Miss Pillagers that managed to spawn eight of them on oh, the yeah. on the board, which was quite amazing. <laughs> but this is a very big change in uh, game cause right now. So Deja Vu got the last lane, right? Yeah, so Deja Vu got the last lane. So now initiative is with Vicer. I would keep the initiative and not do anything on lane one, even though there's the kinfolk there. But but there's nothing to save for lane two, right? You might, might as well just keep kill the creep because there's nothing to play here unless you're playing around certain cards mm -hmm. probably not pro uh, no reason to keep initiative the this armor doesn't do anything oh that's a duel so duel is a very good card uh what do you, who do you duel here i do not uh yeah, yeah this is probably I, okay because you push this fine but... you push for 15 damage yeah, so this is a good tool. Mm -hmm. And next turn you just drop the Oglodi. Yeah, so next turn you just drop the o the Debbie lane two and then Oglodi and then you win. Yeah. So this is another win by Oglodi Vandal. Easy peasy. Which is something we have seen in the previous <laughs> tweaks. Hey, Oglodi Vandal is just I, I, I like this card so much. I think it's super powerful. It wins your game, late game, and early game. If you drop it on an empty bot, it pushes for 8 damage. Mm -hmm. So now, no matter what he buys now, I it's see a... that Vice has actually emptied his own item shop. Yeah, so that's what he's doing. He's putting Debbie in lane 2. Yeah. And. <laughs> That's where he will put the Oglodi vendor for the winning queue. So you, you have to... Now you save initiative because you don't want to get raw. 
if mm-hmm. your Debbie lands in front of them. Uh, now it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter because the Debbie is far away from okay. the beast. Yeah. Okay. That is GG for white sir. G G W P. But the Debbie has 20, 21 HP. <laughs> that is really something I never expect. Seven rounds of cloak. He got his cloak rather early in the game. So do you as Ah there you go. <laughs> would you would you play all your cards and play the Okludi last? Uh, I usually wouldn't. Yeah, you don't DM, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, you don't... it's not nice. Especially now you have yeah. the chat wheel, your opponent can come and talk to you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Confront you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so apparently round four has just ended. Round five. 